الطاهرين الأئمة المعصومين المنتجبين ولا سيما حجة الله في الأراضين روحي وأرواح المؤمنين لتراب مقدمه الفداء As Shi'as of Ahlul Bayt alayhum salam our relation with the Ahlul Bayt is not based on emotions hmm. nor is it based on my father and forefathers have raised me to love Ahlul Bayt this is why I love Ahlul Bayt or I host the Majalis or I attend the Majalis of Ahlul Bayt alayhum salam rather we find that Ahlul Bayt alayhum salam are the foundation of the religion of Allah. And this is something we find from the narrations of Imam al rada alayhi salam. Where the Imam alayhi salam says, Al-Imamatu usul Islam. Imama is the asas of the religion of Islam. Asas means foundation, the root of Islam, the foundation of Islam. The source of Islam is the imama itself. So if I was to take the imama out of the circle of Islam, then I would not have the Islam which Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam has taught us, which is al-Islam al-Muhammadi. When Imam al-Mahdi ajjallahu ta'ala khawajah al-Sharif. Many people will question the religion that Imam alayhi salam comes with. When in reality, the Imam alayhi salam is bringing the religion which Rasulullah came with 1400 years ago. But due, due to the innovations and the changes that the people have made, they will say this is a new religion. In fact, it is Mujaddid al-Shari'a. He's going to renew the Sharia of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. And this is something we found even on the day of Ashura. It is very and just of the Shias of Imam al Hussein, speaking of ourselves, that we limit Ashura to weeping on Imam al Hussein, lamenting on Imam al Hussein, and we move on. When, in fact, if you were to look at Aba Abdullah al Hussein, the Imam alayhi salam was the embodiment of Islam on the day of Ashura. I'll give you a few examples of the qualities that the Imam alayhi salam had shown on the day of Ashura and how can they be derived from the Quran and the narrations of Ahlul Bayt But before I go to the qualities of the Imam, look how the Imam السلام, on the day of Ashura, he linked Tawheed with Imama. Tawheed with Imama, they go hand in hand. You cannot take them away from each other. So for example, the Imam السلام, he would look at the army of Umar ibn Sa'ad and he would tell them these lines. What would the Imam say? The Imam says, لَقَدْ غَضِبَ اللَّهُ عَلَى الْيَهُودِ إِذْ قَالُوا عُزَيْدُ بْنُ اللَّهِ Allah has become angry at the Yahud because they believed or they said Uzair is the son of Allah. This is mentioned in the Quran as well. وَقَالَتِ الْيَهُودِ عُزَيْدُ بْنُ اللَّهِ وَغَضِبَ اللَّهُ عَلَى النَّصَارَىٰ إِذْ قَالُوا عِيسَى بْنُ اللَّهِ And Allah has become angry at the Christians why? because they said Isa is the son of Allah. وَغَضِبَ اللَّهُ عَلَى الْمَجُوسِ إِذْ عَبَدُ الشَّمْسَ وَالْقَمَرِ And Allah has become angry at the Majus because they worship the sun and the moon. Now everything that has been said so far is linked with Tawheed and Shirk. If you were to say he is the son of Allah, Uzair or Isa, it is Shirk. If you were to worship the sun and the moon, it's shirk. Now look at the last line. The Imam says, وَغَضِبَ اللَّهُ عَلَى هَذِهِ الْأُمَّةِ إِذِ اجْتَمَعَتْ عَلَى قَتْلِ إِبْنِ بِنْتِ نَبِيِّهَا Allah has become angry at this nation when they united to kill the son of the daughter of their Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. How did the Imam join the Imam with Tawheed? If you were to kill the Imam of your time, if you were to go against the Imam of your time, initially you're going against what? Tawheed itself. You do not follow the Imam, you will not have the right understanding of Tawheed. This is why you find in Ziyar Nahya, Imam al Mahdi Ajjar Allah Ta'ala Khurja al Sharif. When he's saluting the Imam, Imam al Hussein, what does he say to him? 
بقتلك الإسلام وعطل الصلاة والصيام read the Aranahia read the, just the translation you'll understand what is Imam Al-Hussein in the eyes of Imam Al-Mahdi the Imam says by killing you O Hussein they have killed Islam Islam is Hussein Hussein is Islam who is Hussein Hussein is Imam what did Imam al salam say? If you were to join the points, link the points, the Imama is the foundation of Islam. You do not have Imama, you do not have the Islam that Rasulullah has taught you. What did they do by killing you, O Hussein? They have demolished Salah. They have demolished fasting. Even up to until today, if you were to see the Muslims when they pray, which prayer do they pray? Not the prayer of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa The prayer existed. And in fact, on the day of Ashura, look at the, I don't know what to say about the blindness of those people. How blind can someone be? They have, they had this scream, they had this call on the day of Ashura. Al Hussein. Hasten in the killing of Hussein. Why should we hasten in the killing of Hussein? So we can pray Salatul Asr on time. Allahu Akbar. What, what kind of Salatul Asr are you praying when you are killing the grandson of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Hurry in the killing of Hussein, so what? You can pray on time. So they pray. But which kind of prayer? Imam al Mahdi says they have demolished that prayer of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa That fasting, they've demolished it by killing you or Imam al Hussein alayhi wa So the Imam, the leadership of Imam al alayhi wa it is the foundation. If you take them away, Yes, you may worship Allah, you may have, you may be practicing, practicing Islam, but not the Islam that Rasulullah has come with. And this is why throughout those years until today, the Muslims are in confusion. Which one is right, which one is wrong? But come to the Imam Ali Salam, 14 of them or the 12 Imams, they are all one. The teachings would not differ from one another. What Ali ibn Abi Talib taught, you will find Hassan al-Askari teaching the same and vice versa. So if we were to go on the day of Ashura, what qualities did the Imam السلام, teach the humanity, not just the Shias of Ahlul Bayt or the Muslimin, the humanity at general, what did the Imam السلام, teach them? It's not just when I remember Imam Hussein, I weep and lament, which you should. And I have mentioned this prior to the beginning of Muharram, how Ahlul Bayt السلام, lamented for Imam Hussein, how they have recommended Crying, weeping, and lamenting on Imam Hussein, which is one of the highly recommended acts, which even the dhunubul kabair, we have greater sins and we have smaller sins. The greater sins are forgiven and erased by weeping on Imam Hussein, which is right, you should have it there. But on the other side, what did Imam Hussein stand for? This is something that I can, sh- I can learn from the Imam. Number one was ita'ah. The Imam alayhi salam had total submission to Allah and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is why you find in Ziyar al again, Imam al-Mahdi, when he salutes the Imam, what does he say to him? لَقَدْ أَطَعْتَ اللَّهَ وَمَا عَصَيْتَهُ You have obeyed Allah and you have never disobeyed him. You find that obedience of Allah on the day of Ashura by the Imam himself until the very end. The ita'ah of Allah is what Imam al Hussein had from the dawn of Ashura until the end when he was killed. Ita'ah of Allah and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is one. The second quality you have is patience. Patience of Imam al Hussein was not. In easy patience, and I will give you a line of Imam Al Mahdi what he says about it. But before we go to the patience of Imam Al Mahdi, how he speaks of Imam Al Hussein, there's an ayah in the Quran in Surah Al Baqarah which applies to the Shuhada of Karbala. What, what does Allah say? وَنَبْلُوَنَّكُمْ بِشَيْءٍ مِنَ الْخَوْفِ وَالْجُوعِ وَنَقْصٍ مِنَ الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَنْفُسِ وَالثَّمَرَاتِ وَبَشِّرِ الصَّابِرِينَ الذين إذا أصابتهم مصيبة قالوا إنا لله وإنا إليه راجعون. Allah speaks to the Prophet صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم to tell the mu'mineen that they will be tested with wealth, they will be tested with the loss of their 
sounds. They have to give themselves in the way of Allah. وَبَشِّرِ الصَّابِرِينَ And give glad tidings to those who are patient. Who are those who are patient? إِذَا أَصَابَتْهُمْ مصيبة. When they go through a tragedy, they say, إِنَّا لِلَّهِ وَإِنَّا إِلَيْهِ رَجْعُونَ We belong to Allah and to Allah we shall return. How about a man who says, إِنَّا لِلَّهِ 72 times in one day? This is the patience of Imam Hussain Hussain. Every time he would lose a companion, a family member, he would say, Inna lillah wa inna ilayhi raji'un. He is being patient. The embodiment of patience is Ibn Abdullah Hussain on the day of Ashura. Now let's go to Nahiyah. The Imam Ali Salam, Imam Al Mahdi to Imam Al Hussain, he delves even deeper. What does he say? He says, Laqad ta'ajjabat malaikatu sama. Imam, our Imam to Imam Al Hussain, he says that the angels in heaven. They were shocked at your patience, O oh, Imam Hussain. What patience did the Imam Alayhi Salam show on the day of Ashur that these angels were shocked of the patience of Imam Al Hussain? Let me give you a few examples in the Quran before we go to the patience of the Imam. Allah mentions many prophets who are patient in the Quran. A few of their names are Ayyub Alayhi Salam. He had everything you could think of. Everything, wealth, health, children, he had authority, everything that he wanted was there with him. Allah wanted to test the patience of Ayyub. Allah had taken everything away from him. Everything, you name it, it has taken, including his health, was taken away from him. He could not even go and search for his livelihood. His wife had to bring that livelihood for them to live. Look at the amount of patience. Yet you do not find anywhere that the angels were shocked at the patience of Ayyub. He lost his children. Allah has taken away his children. His wealth, everything that he built. His wife had to go and work, so she brings something for home. They were not shocked. This is the patience of Anbiya. Come to the patience of Yaqub alayhi salam. Yaqub, his pay, how was he tested? Separation from Yusuf alayhi salam. So much so that the Quran says, وَبْيَضَّتْ عَيْنَاهُ مِنَ الْحُزْنِ فَهُوَ كَظِيمٌ He had lost his sight due to the weeping on Yusuf, who he, he knew that he's alive and he's the king of Egypt. Yet the separation was so difficult that he kept weeping and weeping and weeping. He lost his sight. You would not find that the angels were shocked at how patient Yaqub was. Come to Ibrahim alayhi salam where he sees three times in a row that he is slaughtering his own son Ismail I see in my dream O oh, son Ismail that I am slaughtering you what does Ismail reply? 10 years old he says Ya abati ma tu'mar insha'Allah min as oh father do as you have been told you shall find me amongst those who are patient you would not see that the angels were shocked at Ibrahim when he was about to slaughter Ismail. Come to Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib Amir al-Mu'mineen, Imam al-Muttaqeen, so patient that he himself says in Najul Balagha, Sabartu wa fil ayni qada wa fil halqi shaja. 25 years the patience of Amir al-Mu'mineen. He says, as if there was a thorn in my eyes, and a bone in my throat, metaphorically speaking, that I could see that the religion of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam being changed, yet when I speak, there's no one to listen. If I was to say something, no one, no one would listen to me. It's as if I have a bone in my throat. Every time I say and say, no one would listen to me. Yet, it was very difficult for the Imam. He says, and this is the line of the Imam, I will be patient until patience itself gives up on my patience. Imam Amir al-Mu'minin Ali ibn Abi Talib. Yet, you do not find the angels were shocked at the patience of, of, of Amir al-Mu'minin Ali ibn Abi Talib. 
I ask you what patience did Imam al Hussein demonstrate on the day of Ashur? That Imam al Mahdi says that the angels in heavens were shocked at your patience, O Hussein. Sayyid al Sabirin, something that the Imam al no one, no one would be able to be patient and yet say, Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. I'm pleased. If this is, this is what pleases you, O Allah, I'm pleased with that. You would not find Imam al Hussein complaining to Allah yeah. or going against the will of Allah. If this is what Allah wants, then be it. This is the patience of Imam al Hussein. Something that you and I can take lessons from. No one would be able to tell you that they will have a musibah like the musibah of Asghar in their life. Anyone? No one. You would not have your child being slaughtered in your hands with a three-pointed arrow and then you would say, Oh Allah, I'm pleased for whatever you're pleased. You wouldn't. If anything, we have problems that we ourselves create in our, in our life. 90% of the problem we have, we create them. We bring them to ourselves. Be it financial problems, family problems, community problems, a problem between a friend, a problem between a brother. Where does it come from? We create those problems. And then we say, oh Allah, I can't take this anymore. But come to Imam al-Hussain something that comes his way, yet he does not complain. He says, Alhamdulillah ala kulli hal. In fact, so much so, that when Asghar alayhi salam is slaughtered in his hands, he says, Hawwana ma nazala li annahu bi'aynillah. What makes this easy for me, that Allah is watching me. What kind of patience did your Imam السلام, demonstrate on the day of Ashura? Imam al Mahdi says that your patience has surprised or had shocked the angels of heaven's office. This is on one side. Come to the riba. What does riba mean? Being pleased with, with whatever Allah is pleased with. Our Imam, our eighth Imam, السلام, his name is Imam Ali al Riba. Whatever Allah has put in his way, you'd find him. He was radi. I'm pleased. Imam al Hussein alayhi salam on the day of Ashura, what kind of riba did he demonstrate? I ask you. Go and look at the history books. I'll read an ayah from the Quran to you. In fact, two verses of the Quran. Now, you as mu'mineen, what does Allah tell you in the Quran? Radiyallahu anhum wa radu anhu. Allah is pleased with the mu'mineen, and the mu'mineen are pleased with Allah. Whose rida came first, Allah or the mu'mineen? Allah's rida. So Allah is pleased, therefore the mu'mineen are pleased with whatever Allah is pleased with. Come to the day of Ashura and look how things have been changed for the sake of Hussein. An ayah in the Quran, which you have all read, it's only sometimes we have to reflect on what we read. Ya ayyatuha nafsul mutma'inna irji'i ila rabbiki Radiya Mardiya Allahu Akbar. Look at the riba of Imam al Hussein and how much it matters in the eyes of Allah. Allah says to the Imam alayhi salam by the end of the day of Ashura, He says, O oh, the content self, O oh, the mutma'in self, come back to your Lord. You are pleased with Him and He is pleased with you. The riba of Hussein comes first. And then he put his own riba. Whomsoever Hussein is pleased with, Allah is pleased with him. Whomsoever Hussein is displeased with, Allah will be displeased with him. This is, so what is it that the Imam Ali Salam demonstrated on the day of Ashura? Allah says to him, whatever pleases you, pleases me, O Hussein. Like father, like son. Go to the night of Hijrah. Ali ibn Abi Talib sells his soul for the pleasure of Allah. Imam al Hussein likewise on the day of Ashura. In the most painful way. Yet you'd not find him complaining. He would say, Ribban li ribaq. Tasliman li amrik. La ma'muda siwaka ya. Ghiyath al mustaghithin. I am pleased for whatever you're pleased with. Tasliman li amrik. Total submission for your commands. لا معبود سبحانه no one worthy to be worshipped other than you يا غياث المستغيثين or the one who helps the one who has no one to help him 
Yet Imam al Hussein alayhi salam did not find him complaining. So when I read the day of Ashura, I read the Makhtar of Imam al Hussein, weep on him, no doubt. Lament on him, no doubt. But what do I learn from Abu Abdullah al Hussein? Let me take it into my life. Be sadr, be radi on whatever you have in your life. Be patient, be muti' of Allah and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is three, four. And this is especially for the youth, the young ones. Allah ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. The Imam alayhi salam demonstrated companionship. Companionship. On the day of Ashura. In fact, if you were to look into details from dawn until the martyrdom of Imam al-Hussein, you would see that the Imam alayhi salam applied all Islam in that one day. All Islam, akhlaq, morality, as a spouse, as a father, as a friend, as a submissive servant to Allah. He demonstrated all that in that one day, Imam al Hussein did. 1400 years ago, people would not understand this. Someone was killed because he went against the Khalifa, but today they would learn from Imam al Hussein. Sayyid Khomeini, he says, Everything that we have is the lesson from Ashura. Now, you would be able to see if you want to see what he did when he the revolution took over. What, what, what was the lesson? Where, who actually was the role model for Sayyid Khomeini? Imam al Hussein. Even if you were to look at the non Muslims who wanted to revolt against the oppressor of the time, who was the role model they looked up to? Imam al Hussein. So Imam al Hussein has demonstrated everything on the day of Ashura only if we look for it. So companionship. Imam Ali Salam, all of the companions that he had, he himself on the night of Ashur, what does he say about them? Inni la ara ashaban khayran min ashabi. I, Hussein, do not see companions better than my companions. One of those companions was by the name of Habib ibn Mudahir. Habib ibn Mudahir. The Imam Ali Salam. When he arrived to Karbala on 2nd of Muharram, he wrote a letter to Habib ibn Mudahir. How does the letter begin? In al faqih Habib ibn Mudahir. 75 years old, Habib was. Imam Hussein was 57 years old. The alim of that time, Hussein, he says, in al faqih to the jurist Habib ibn Mudahir. When the alim says that someone else is faqih and that alim is a divine leader, that shows you why was that person or what kind of knowledge that he possesses that the imam of the time says to him, you're an alim, you're a faqih. Imam Sadiq alayhi salam, he was questioned, why did Imam al Hussein address Habib as faqih? A lesson for your life that we can apply in today's life and listen to this. The lesson that Habib teaches you and I, how should you treat the Imam of your time? Imam al Sadiq says, Why did Imam al Hussein address Habib as what? As Faqih, yes, as a jurist. Why? When it was the Salah time, when it was the time of prayers on the day of Ashura, when the Imam stepped forward to pray, one of the enemies says to the Imam, O oh Hussein, do you think that your Salah will be accepted? Neither your Salah will be accepted, and the religion that you own is falsehood. Who heard this? Habib. The ghira of Habib on the Imam of his time, the protective nature of Habib was such that he went to the Imam alayhi salam. He says, Oh Imam, I won't be able to pray my last prayer behind you. Allow me to go and fight this man. How dare he speak to you in such a way? Imam al-Sadiq says, Habib knew Salah is wajib, but he knew that defending the Imam of time is awjab. This is why Imam al-Hussein addresses him as faqih. 
He knows when to do, what to do. Salah is wajib, no doubt. But how does someone speak of my Imam Tan in such a way? I will go and fight him. And he fought him and he was martyred. But he was martyred as a faqih. Now if you go to Karbala, you will see that Abbas Ali Salam has his own shrine. Imam Hussein has his own shrine. The Shuhada have their own shrine. Habib has his own shrine. Habib has his own shrine. All of the Shuhada in one. Now what difference does that make? If you may ask. What difference? When you go to the Shuhada, what do you say? Assalamu alaikum, ayyuha shuhada, bima sabartum, yes? Peace be upon you for the patience that you had shown on the day of Ashura. Peace be upon you all the shuhada in one. When you go to Habib, what do you say to him? Assalamu alaikum, ya Habib ibn Mudahir. You address him by his name. When you go into a room full of people, you say, Assalamu alaikum, it's one. But when you walk through the crowd and you say one salam to that one individual, it's different. This shows that this man stood out from the rest. On the day of Ashura, for what he had demonstrated, he had shown that the ita'a of the Imam is the ita'a of Allah. And this is something that you and I learn from Habib. In fact, if you were to go on 6th of Muharram when he arrived in Karbala, he, had, he came on a horse. He came on a horse to help the Imam. He, Habib could have chosen to come outside the tents of Imam Al-Hussein. He could have. What did he do? He stopped his horse a bit far away from the tents. He dismounted the horse, walked humbly towards the Imam of his time. He came, he kissed the hand of Hussein. He stepped down, he took the dust that he was stepping on, and he kissed the dust that the Imam was stepping on. This is the act of who? Faqih. Faqih. Something that if you recall when I begin the lecture, what did I say? About our Imam Ajarallah Ta'ala Fajr al-Sharif. Ruhi wa arwah al-mu'mineen liturabi maqdamihi al-fida. What does it mean? My soul and the soul of the mu'mineen will be sacrificed for the soil that the Imam steps on. Habib demonstrated that on the day of Ashura. I ask you, what is the position of the Imam? Only if we understood. These people, when they understood it, they became the dust of the shuhada. Imam al Hussein, on the night of Ashur, he allows him to leave. He says, Antum fi hilm min bay'ati. My bay'ah is halal for you. Go live wherever you want to live. Do whatever you want to do. I'll meet you in paradise. Not a single one left. Not a single one. Why? They knew that they would die the day tomorrow. They knew the way they would be slaughtered and their heads would be taken away from their bodies. Yet they said to the Imam, this life is worthless without you, O Hussein. Understand the relation with the Imam of your time. I cannot go back to 61 and defend Imam Hussein, but I can correct my relation with my Imam of time, Ajarullah. If anything, it teaches me how they defended their Imam. You stand by the side of your Imam, Hajarullah Ta'ala for your shirk. Karbala, like Imam al Hussein alayhi salam says, Ana qatilul abarat. I am the martyr of tears. Whenever a mu'min remembers me, he would shed a tear on me. That's called the abra. Abra is a tear. A ibra with a kasra means an example for the humanity to learn from. Hussein is Abra, Hussein is Ibra, an example. Weep and learn from the examples of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. Imam al Rada alayhi salam. He had a companion by the name of Al Rayan ibn Shabib. Just a bit of an example of the tragedy of Imam al-Hussein and how Ahlul Bayt wept on Imam al-Hussein alayhi salam. The Imam alayhi salam says to him, Ya ibn al-Shabib, in kunta baakiyan fabki al-Hussein, fa innahu dhubiha kama yudbahu al-Kabsh. O Habib, O Shabib, if you were to weep someone, then weep Hussein, for he was slaughtered like the slaughtering of a sheep. 
I ask you, O Mu'mineen, why is it that the Imam alayhi salam compares the slaughtering of Hussein to that of a sheep? Three reasons that the ulama come up with. Number one, you would see that when a sheep is being slaughtered, no one would object. A sheep is normally to be slaughtered. When Imam al Hussein alayhi salam was being slaughtered, Zainab alayhi salam came out. She says, Ya Umar ibn Sa'd. أيقتل الحسين وأنت تنظر إليه؟ أو عمر، do you see Hussein being slaughtered and all you do is just watch him being slaughtered؟ عمر does not answer her. Zainab عليه السلام then looks at the army of Yazid. She says to them, ويحكم أما فيكم مسلم؟ Woe be unto you! Is there no one Muslim amongst you? You see that Hussein is being slaughtered, yet not a single one answered Zainab. This is one reason. Number two reason why the Imam alayhi salam compares the slaughtering of Hussein to that of a sheep is that when a sheep is slaughtered, why, why, why do they slaughter a sheep? Normally on Eid occasions. Normally a sheep is slaughtered on Eid occasions or a joyful occasion. When Imam al Hussein was slaughtered, you find that the army of Yazid were dancing around the body of Imam al Hussein full of joy as if they have achieved victory. Number three reason. Number three. When a sheep is being slaughtered, what happens? Everyone comes around and they take a piece of that sheep. Come to the day of Ashura. Imam al Hussein alayhi salam, as he was leaving towards the battlefield, he says, Oh Zainab, bring me the shirt that my mother Fatima has made for me for the day of Ashura. Zainab alayhi salam brings that shirt of Fatima for Hussein. The Imam alayhi salam rips the shirt from the front. He rips the shirt from the back. Zainab alayhi salam says to the Imam, Oh Hussein, why is it that you rip the shirt? The Imam alayhi salam says, Oh Zainab, only moments after my martyrdom, someone is going to come and drop the amama of me. Someone is coming to take the aba of me. Someone is going to take the slippers of Hussein. The other one will take the sword of the Imam. The other one will take the shield of Imam al Hussein. An enemy by the name of Bajdal. He says, when I came to the body of Hussein, I circulated the body three times. I could not find anything to take. He says, until my sight saw the ring of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam, I reached the ring of Abba Abdullah. I could not snatch it off his finger. He says, I snatched it, it could not come off. I reached my dagger. I cut the finger of Hussein alayhi salam. I took the ring of that Imam. I threw the finger of Hussein into the plains of Karbala. Three days after Ashura, Imam al-Sajjad alayhi salam comes for the burial of Imam al-Hussein alayhi salam. He says, oh Banu Asad, bring me a rug. They were they were surprised. Why would a sajjad need a rug when he came to bury Al Hussein alayhi salam? When they brought him the rug, the Imam alayhi salam opens the rug. When he would go and lift the upper body of Hussein, the lower body would not be lifted. When he would lift the lower body, the upper body of Hussein would not be lifted. Due to the trampling of the horses on the body of Hussein, the flesh and the bones were mixed together. The Imam alayhi salam takes the body and puts it on the rug of that was given to him by the Banu Asad. The Imam alayhi salam places the body of Hussein into the grounds of Karbala. Banu Asad say the Imam came out. He was looking for something. We did not know what he was looking for. The Imam kept wondering about Karbala until he reached this place. He picks up a small finger. He kisses that finger. He weeps and he brings that finger, buries it with the body of Hussein alayhi salam. أنا لعنة الله على القوم الظالمين وسيعلم الذين ظلموا أي منقلب ينقلبون والعاقبة للمتقين والحمد لله رب العالمين ما تم يا حسين